During photosynthesis, light energy fuels the production of ATP, but it does so indirectly. Sunlight powers the transport of electrons through an electron transport chain. The energy release during electron transport drives the movement of protons across a membrane, forming a proton gradient. It is this gradient that fuels the production of ATP. In his chemiosmotic hypothesis, Peter Mitchell proposed that ATP synthesis is powered by the potential energy stored in a gradient of protons across a membrane. Andre Jagendorf and Ernest Uribe performed a convincing test of his hypothesis on plant tissue. The first step in Jagendorf and Uribe's experiment was to prepare chloroplast membrane vesicles. To do this, they ground up leaves into small fragments. From these fragments, they extracted membrane material. The extracted material formed many tiny spherical vesicles. Many of the vesicles were composed of pieces of chloroplast membranes. Although it was not known at the time, these vesicles contained the protein ATP synthase found in chloroplasts. ATP synthase consists of two main parts. One part spans the membrane and serves as a channel for ions. The other part, which protrudes out of the membrane, contains the molecular machinery that joins ADP and inorganic phosphate to make ATP. In the next step, the scientists prepared a solution of hydrogen ions, or protons, adjusted to pH 4. The vesicles were placed in this solution. Although the actual solution contained millions of vesicles too small to see, the process is illustrated here by using a large representation of a single vesicle. The vesicles were allowed to equilibrate for a long period of time, during which protons slowly crossed the membrane until the solution inside the vesicles was also pH 4. The solution outside the vesicles was then adjusted to pH 8 by greatly reducing the concentration of protons. This created a concentration gradient across the membrane with a high concentration of protons inside and a low concentration outside. During the pH change, ADP and inorganic phosphate were also introduced into the solution. Under these conditions, the scientists observed that ATP was produced. Biologists now know the molecular details of how ATP is produced. The channels of ATP synthase are selective for protons. Because the proton concentration was higher inside the vesicles than outside, protons entered the channels and diffused down their concentration gradient toward the outside of the vesicles. At the same time, ADP and inorganic phosphate bound to the enzyme. These substances were converted to ATP as protons completed their journey through the ATP synthase channel. The formation of ATP in this experiment provided convincing evidence that Mitchell's chemiosmotic hypothesis was correct.